Just recently, I had an idea for a video and really just for myself where I was thinking about what kind of mods for Fallout 4 could potentially just be features in a Fallout 5, or even should be features. I thought it'd be a cool or interesting video for Fallout 4, some of those fundamental but natural feeling mods, but then separately that got me thinking. When is Fallout 5? Surely with Fallout 4 being Bethesda's best selling game thus far, it would happen at some point. But when you start to do the math, carry the one, and look at some of the recent decisions Bethesda are making, it makes me feel like that it's not happening anytime soon. And I think a plausible release window could be much further down the line, such as the end of this decade or in that general area. And I think one of the first or core problems around this is, in a way, we were spoiled. Or at least if you're a Fallout fan on paper, you were supposed to be, I guess. In 2015, Bethesda released Fallout 4. It was pretty good, definitely one of the weaker entries in the franchise overall, but I would say since then, the modding scene has really picked this game up. And then actually a very surprising move, and maybe not everyone remembers this, in 2018, Bethesda released Fallout 76. Before we got that teaser, although there were some discussions here and there, most people thought we were getting something else. Starfield was the leading theory at the time, as we kind of knew that the Elder Scrolls 6 was still a ways away, but lo and behold, no, instead they're doing something with a multiplayer Fallout. To me, it definitely felt like monetization was kept in mind while they're developing and creating that game. And in a way, Fallout fans were supposed to be spoiled. We got a new Fallout game at a point when nobody was really expecting a new Fallout game. Now, of course, in reality, Fallout 76 had a plethora of problems both on release and even in the past year since release. But even if the game is perfect, it still isn't for a lot of those existing Fallout fans. It almost is like Fallout 76 has a bit of a different attraction than Fallout 4 and 3. And you can definitely see that even in some of the communities around the game. So though, of course, there is crossover, they both are fallouts, not as much as you would probably think, kind of similar to ESO and Skyrim. But as such, when you keep that in mind, that we had those back-to-back -back fallouts, when the second one, 76, wasn't really expected, and you start to look ahead at Bethesda's upcoming timeline, we already know the next game is Starfield, and the one after that is The Elder Scrolls Six. And as you start to do that math, you realize that, hey, Fallout 5 is actually pretty far away. As far as the when of Starfield, a lot are hopeful for 2020, Bethesda has remained adamant that there still will be those three year gaps in between games, or something roughly around those numbers, so 2021 probably at the latest, and then maybe if things go really well, the Elder Scrolls in 2022, Bethesda did just quadruple in size since the development of Fallout 4, so I think there definitely is some hope that the development cycle of these games will speed up somewhat. But then, I think this is where you get into the Fallout 5 problem. Since we just got back-to-back -back Fallouts, to me it feels less likely that Bethesda immediately jumps into developing a new Fallout game. At that point, Starfield would be 2-3 to three years old, and if that game ends up being a success for the company, something they want to revisit, I think it would make a lot more sense to start development on a Starfield 2 rather than just to neglect that new IP even further. There definitely could be some hope for something like a remaster coming from one of the secondary studios that are now within Bethesda Game Studios, similar to what we saw with Skyrim Special Edition, but a remaster of 3 or New Vegas that's done right, an actual port to the updated engine would be a pretty large project, not as simple as a Skyrim remaster. And if anything, I feel like a Fallout 4 remaster, as crazy as that sounds, could even be more likely at this point, or a Fallout 4 special edition on next-gen consoles. Plus, Todd Howard has actually been pretty outspoken about how he's not a huge fan of remasters in general. I mean, take all of that together, to me, I think it seems most likely we don't see Fallout 5 till the end of the 2020s. I think whether or not Starfield comes out this year would be quite revealing around the development time at Bethesda, but even still, two-year gaps would put Fallout 5 quite a ways away. 10 year gap from Fallout 4. And this actually gets me back to some of those quotes or statements we saw from Bethesda around the release of Fallout 76, specifically from Pete Hines talking about how this would be a game that lasts forever. That of course was before we saw the bugginess or mismanagement. It definitely wasn't a quote that aged super well, but seemingly Bethesda was probably saying that because they internally realized that, yeah, another Fallout isn't coming for a long time. Now maybe Wastelanders really does deliver, we get more of that old school or original Fallout style, and maybe everyone starts loving Fallout 76 a few years down the road, but I know for me at least there still will be a major part of me that does miss that original or true to form single player experience. As I was editing this and listening to myself back, I started to realize people will probably start commenting, well Bethesda might reach out to somebody like Obsidian or a different company to remake or even just create a totally new Fallout like they did in the past. 
Which yes, that is definitely possible. But even just last year when asked this question, Todd Howard said, I wouldn't say never, but now that our company is so big, it's always better to keep stuff internal. It becomes less likely, but I could never say never. I also imagine there's a decent chunk of people that are happy with this news that Fallout is probably going to be on hold for a little while. Some because they feel betrayed by Fallout 76 and don't want to see Bethesda making more content around the Fallout franchise, even though Fallout 76 DLC and even Creation Club is still a thing but also those that are just excited for Bethesda to take a break with that IP and come back with something particularly special. Which speaking of, something that I don't think too many people realize that makes me even more bummed out about this whole situation. During the development of Fallout 4, one of the other major locations they were considering for the game's setting was New York. A New York-based Fallout 5 taking advantage of engine improvements and future technology, the next-gen consoles, would be incredible. That would be like my dream Fallout experience, as long as it has a good story. So maybe it'll come, but it might not be for another 8 years or so, which does hurt to say. Who knows if I'll even still be making videos 8 years from now. So either way, not as much of a positive video, but that's the harsh reality when it comes to Fallout 5 and the problem it poses for Bethesda. They now have to juggle three IPs at a time, and even though they're larger, it still will leave quite a bit of time in between entries of their games. Hopefully you guys found this video informative. As always, again, I thank you for watching, but with that, I hope to see you all next time. Later.